when the only way to win is power, except no substitute. These guys brought it, and that's how they have to go forward after the Bengals. Let's break it down. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Ryan. This is me going rogue here on RGR Football. Now you see what those letters mean, right? We have a lot to talk about. It's been a hectic day. I want to give you a quick breakdown of who stood out, what has to happen, and what are the new possibilities. Yes, Kareem Hunt is a possibility. We'll talk about that later in the show. I'm going to talk about everybody else that's going to go with him. We are going to get to my guy, Leo Chanel. I'm going to show you a little bit of film coming up here in a minute. But we got to start with Kingsley Suamata Ia. He is under a little bit of fire. And this week, starting with the Falcons and Matt Judon, as well as everything else, until he gets it under control, he is going to be a target. But I have faith in Kingsley's ability to settle down. Now, Andy won't name a starter. He's going to give him a little bit of an out. But I do think he ends up being the guy at left tackle. And I think that's a good thing. You got to let him take his bumps and his, uh, you know, shortfalls in stride and get back on the horse and get back after it. I do think should they decide to start Juan e. Morris, they're going to realize very quickly that that isn't the solution they're looking for. I think you put Kingsley right back into the fire. You help him out and you actually have to adjust. This is the thing. Andy Reid, Matt Nagy, you were too stubborn last week. You did not give Kingsley enough help against one of the more technical, certainly the better speed rushers in this league and a guy that knew how to attack him. I told you to give him chips. I told you to have the tight ends help him out, maybe even give him a sixth offensive lineman, and you didn't do it. That is the result that you get. That is a rookie being outmatched by a veteran elite player, and that's what you can't let happen again. I know it didn't look pretty, and a lot of fans uh, want him to sit for a while. I don't agree with that. I think you get him right back out there, you get his confidence back, and you build him right back up. He is the long-term solution at left tackle. So, Kingsley has to stay, has to come in, I think, loud and clear. Leo Chanel, on the other side of the ball, was everywhere. And this is a season, I said this just the other day, and, and I do want to back it up uh, in a little bit more detail because I do think Drew Tranquil has taken on a different role. He is not the fly-around, lighter linebacker that he was. He has to be a two-backer kind of guy. I think he slowed down a little bit. I, put, I think he put a little bit of weight on, a little bit of strength on. That's good. Some armor. So they can take on the run and be a little bit more effective there. And I think that has paid off in spades. I think he's been good against the run. Certainly when he sees it and can shoot, he's able to take out some of the running paths that you really need to accomplish in order to get these wins. But what has suffered in the meantime has been a bit of his speed and coverage. And I think that's part of why seeing running backs get yardage the tight ends against uh, Cincinnati were, were all over the place because the linebacker level is a little bit iffy in the coverage aspect. And what used to be a strength for Drew Tranquil, I think as the season goes on and he lightens naturally through attrition, I think that's going to change. Leo Chanel is stepping up. He is doing the work, not only in the things that he's good at, in rushing the passer and coming up the middle, mugging up and making quarterbacks make decisions and changes. That is all great stuff but he's actually been able to be better in pass coverage than I thought it was going to be. So huge shout out to him. And then you get to see him get on the offensive side of the ball, a classic throwback guy. I really like that. We're going to take a couple look at some plays he made right here. Excited for Leo Chanel to get a little look on the offensive side. Had a couple of nice plays on the defense, but he did make an impact on the offensive side as well. This is always fun for me. Classic look at offense with what you get here in the formation. You have the extra offensive lineman in Wani Morris. This comes into play later in the game when they do throw to him. You have the tight end on the other side. This is jumbo package full backfield. This is classic. Exactly what I've been asking Andy Reid to do for about six years. And we're getting more wrinkles of it. This is Carson Steele in the backfield doing his thing. Noah Gray on the side. This is Leo Chanel. Already lined up, already ready, because he is not in a fullback stance, not in a tailback stance as the other two guys are, which he probably could have run of because of his uh, his natural ability at linebacker in a two-point stance. But he is down on all fours. Four-point stance as a fullback, going to attack up the field and clear the way for Carson Steele, who has to go through that. He does get a seal here. Is it pretty? 
No, not necessarily, but that's okay. He comes off the ball, makes contact, and moves his guy out of the way, shielding a gap for the running back to take hold of. Now, the back does a good job as well, following the block of not only Noah Gray, but of Big Trey Smith, and it does pay off, gets a nice game, and Leo Chanel helped pave the way. Now, from the opposite point of view, this is looking down the barrel. We're going to roll this just so you can see the girth of manhood coming at you with the full line, tight end on one side, extra offensive lineman on the other, full backfield three with Patrick and Hunts. You can do a lot of things out of this, but this is what it looks like. If you are one of these defenders, if you take a look, you have one, two, three, four, for four over here. You have one, two, three, four, five, and a sixth shaded to this side of the formation. The snap, 57, is moving towards the other side, which gives you the ability to pull Trey Smith. And as he goes forward, the, the movement of Trey right here is going to give it away. And boom, the linebacker is able to trigger down. Both linebackers opposite 57. So you have 59 and 55 here are triggering off of the Trey motion and coming downhill. And what Leo gets to do out of his four-point stance here in the backfield is he gets to fire off and come get the first guy on the outside of the gap that he is looking to create right here. Now, this is a designed run. You can see how Kingsley Sulamati is going to come down and help Joe drive the defensive tackle out of that gap, boom, making that spot. Trey is looping around to then take on the linebacker on the weak side. Well, and this is a balanced formation, but normally we'd call this a weak side because that's where Trey's pulling to. So he's coming around, much like he did last week in this clip, uh, of what was a, a play that he garnered three defensive players. He's going to come through. He's going to come through and make the difference here. Boom, sealing that. He didn't even have to really do it because... As he comes around, the linebacker doesn't want any part of him right here. He's going inside. And so Noah Gray is the second block here that's coming in to clean him up. Trey slips off and is actually going out after a little DB that he gets a hold of as well. But kudos to the DB for getting turned and getting his hand around Carson Steele. So again, in real time, watch how these blocks unfold. Boom, 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 boom. Three of them. And I want to go back to Leo Chanel because... This is, this is foreign territory for Leo. He's just basically firing off as though he's in a D-line stance and he's going to take the first guy on the outside of that hole to Kingsley because Kingsley's making space here by coming down this way. By coming down this way, he's going to kick out the opposite way, and that creates the gap. Now it's about the guys that are coming through the gap to clear it out, which they do. Steele is able to bounce off. He gets low and is able to keep going, keep his legs going, and it is a big gain. It's exactly what you want, and it all is part because Leo Chanel helped Trey Smith clear the way for Carson Steele. Download the free autograph app right now. You can watch your favorite creators in Chiefs Kingdom like RGR on this app, listen to the podcast and read the articles and get points for everything you do that lead to the big rewards. Download Autograph for free from our link below or use the code RGR. Now, Leo's Leo, been a fan of his since he came from Wisconsin, and I think the power aspect of this team is what you want to see because I think that's something they can lean on, lean into even, in order to get it done. So we're going to go that direction. I like him on offense. I think Carson Steele should be the feature back from right now on first and second down. I do think Samaj P. Ryan should be the third down back pretty much exclusively for the next while until Pops returns. But the Chiefs decided after Andy Reid said, hey, we're going with the guys we got, which do include uh, a couple of the practice squatters. Uh, he did say, uh, hey, we're Later in the day, we found out Kareem Hunt's going to come in for a visit. In fact, when you're seeing this, the visit should be complete, and we'll know soon whether uh, they're going to bring him in to the team or not. This is a day I thought was never going to come. Because of the way it ended for Kareem Hunt's first day in Kansas City, I thought Clark Hunt was never going to give him another red cent, period. I didn't think there was any way around that. But I will say this. Kudos to Clark Hunt putting – the team first and destiny first because job number one is to get this three P to do everything you can to pull out all the stops 
including letting your pride down a little bit so that you can get to that third Super Bowl and win it. That is the goal for everyone across this organization and this fan base everywhere. And that takes something because Clark Hunt was the guy who got lied to and was really pissed off about it. And as I understand from my sources, was the reason he was out in Kansas City, period. You pull that stuff, he wasn't happy with it. Never has it been a conversation about him coming back until today, until the injury to Isaiah Pacheco. And I really didn't think he would ever get to that. Now, Hunt knows a version of this offense. It's quite different than it was then. It has evolved, but he has the basis. He has a redemption storyline that he can chase. I think that's good for him. It might even be good for the franchise. He has an ability that fits what they like to do. That was evident even back then. The difference is he's five seasons older and he's not as spry as he was. He's still a a good back, but I wouldn't call him the same athlete. I wouldn't call him uh, as good an athlete as he was last time he was in Kansas City. So my point being, if they do sign him, I don't think he walks in and becomes the starter. I just don't see it. I think Carson Steele has earned that right to be the primary back, at least for the next few weeks. And then maybe it turns into more of a committee. That's fine. But I think that's the way that it ought to go because Kareem Hunt comes with luggage, baggage, whatever you want to call it, uh, but does have some upside in terms of understanding the offensive concepts, having that motivation of redemption, and knowing that his career is that farther down the road. And for a running back, they end early in terms of their career spans. This might be his last chance to push towards a Super Bowl. If he can make it up to his old team by helping them get there, I think that's a huge plus. And if they decide to do it, if they feel mentally there's a connection and that they can get back together and it'll work, I'm all for it. We're going to see what happens. Let me know what you think. Put your comments down below. Do you want Kareem Hunt back or not? Bottom line, yes or no. That's what I want to see in the comments. It's going to be a heck of a poll. Make sure you like, sub, hit the bell. Check out our friends at Green Gridiron because they're doing great work for you. Go get on Autograph because Autograph is going to hook you up as well. They do a lot of good work and it's all in one place. So thanks for our sponsors for helping us out. Have a great day. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.